So here we're going to discuss the new earthquake image system created on electricquakes.org which displays earthquakes uh, in an unusual and different way that adds to the understanding of the standard earthquake display. So as you see across the top of the image it says um, Earthquakes, electricquakes.org, worldwide earthquakes. Electricquakes.org is, of course, the organization that hosts the website which produces these maps, and they're produced uh, every few minutes. Uh, and then you have a title here that tells you what the image is, and these are worldwide earthquakes, and these are the earthquakes that occurred over the past 24 hours. As of Saturday, the 12th, September of September 2020 at uh, 0400 uh, using the time zone 04 which um, is Eastern Standard Time I believe. Anyway it's uh, very much a standard display in the respect that it shows the, the location of the earthquakes and the magnitude of the earthquakes by the size of the circle so every earthquake magnitude goes up in radius by approximately uh, double. And this has the effect of eliminating a lot of the small, usual, typical miscellaneous small earthquakes while still displaying them and focusing your attention more on the larger quakes in the world. So obviously here off the coast of Japan there was a series of larger quakes and uh, there are many smaller quakes as you can see along California here which are very usual uh, obviously Alaska had a uh, larger quake uh, and the color of the circle also indicates the relative time of the quake in the 24-hour period so a darker red circle happened at a earlier part of that time. Uh, the lighter and brighter the circle, the more recent the earthquake. So in other words, this earthquake would have happened earlier than a darker red earthquake here. <coughs> the really interesting thing about this display though is what you see across the bottom. And that is a very good, quick visual reference of the activity and the time period. In this case, of course, it's the 24-hour time period. So <coughs> the far left side of the image would represent 24 hours ago. The far right side of the image would represent the current time. And these are the earthquakes that happened all across the world displayed along that time graph. Again, this one's for 24 hours. If this, if we were looking at the one hour map, this whole time scale would represent one hour, etc. They also have a seven day map and a 30 day map, I believe. Uh, so there are several interesting things about this bottom section. So this obviously shows that there was an earthquake that happened uh, almost 24 hours ago. It shows you the relative size of the earthquake by the length of the line. So the short lines are the much smaller earthquakes. The longer lines are the um, more powerful earthquakes. The magnitudes are expressed approximately linearly. So a magnitude 1 is going to be 1 seventh the size of the line of a magnitude 7 earthquake. My guess is that uh, something like this is probably a 6 or a 7. Um, so what you can see here is that this shows you a lot of small earthquakes occurring in that 24-hour period. It shows you at a glance a spacing of larger earthquakes happening. It shows you if there are clusters of quakes during the day, which is very hard to pick up from a normal map that just shows circles. Uh, when you're looking at these circles, even though these are color-coded or any typical map, um, it's very hard to know whether this earthquake really happened close to this earthquake or close to this earthquake or close to this earthquake. 
if there was a slew of earthquakes that all occurred within an hour in the 24-hour period or if they were evenly spaced in the 24-hour period. This bottom line graph really shows you those clusters and that's why it's so interesting and helpful. It shows you the clusters in time. It shows you the magnitude of the individual quakes. And there's another thing it does which is very clever and that is these lines vary in color based on the location of the earthquake on the earth. If a quake is uh, more in the California area these lines will be a light green. If the lines are darker green that's typically a more northern location. Uh, if they're more red it's typically a more eastern location. So these quakes here off the coast of China are probably represented by this darker red line. All these light green quakes, the small ones are fed by the California earthquake uh, seismometers so you have a preponderance of the smaller quakes that come from California which is why they're all light green, almost all light green you might occasionally see one that's a light blue or different things so again what this shows you is here's another light blue one uh, my guess is this a, a four or five magnitude another light blue one so this shows you that okay here we go we started in 24 hours ago we went along there were sort of a sparse number of small quakes in Southern California then uh, we had a larger quake that was not in Southern California because it's not the light green. Didn't, then we had more small quakes in Southern California than sort of a slew of small quakes in Southern California. And we went along and suddenly we have this sort of purplish color. So, and a light blue color here. So these indicate quakes that happened in other places in the earth. Again, back to Southern California, which is constantly feeding more quakes than any place else in the, uh, in the world simply because that's the location of the data source for this data. Uh, again, another light blue quake, another light blue quake. Now what this allows you to see is if there is an extremely large quake in one part of the world, does that cause a cluster of other large quakes within a quick time period in other parts of the world? So here there's a large quake that's dark red this may have been the China quake. Um, actually, my guess is that these blue blue lines are the China quake because what you're seeing here is several blue lines um, of higher and then uh, some aftershocks. So my guess is that those light blues are this this area off Japan with the aftershocks. So Quix gives you a visual, so you can look at this small graph without even looking at anything in the world. And as you get used to it, you can say, okay, tons of earthquakes in California, uh, grouping here, a grouping here, a grouping here, a grouping here. Okay, another quake, uh, perhaps this one's in South America. Um, a lighter green quake, that was Alaska. Uh, uh, a dark red quake, that may be South America. And <clears throat> while there's no color code, and there really should be, uh, that has a legend that tells you exactly where these are, you can see when there's a large event what these are. And it's, speci it's especially evident in the one-hour map. Um, so here we are looking again at a sequence of quakes. So you can look at a glance in 24 hours, say, was there a cluster? Was there an event? Did it happen within one geographical area of the Earth? Or did it cause a lot of reaction of different quakes in many areas of the Earth, which would show up as multicolored lines? So that's a real innovation in an earthquake graphic um, that Electric Quakes produces that no other site that I have seen produces. Anyway, just wanted to give you a quick explanation of how this graphic works and what it means. Thanks.